Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing DACO New Energy stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. DACO New Energy is a leading manufacturer of high quality polysilicone for the solar PV industry. The company is headquartered in China and was founded in 2007. It went public in 2010 and currently trades on the NASDAQ. The company seems to continuously expand its factory so it can produce more products. It is one of the world's lowest cost producers of high quality polysilicone. Its highly efficient and technically advanced manufacturing facility in China currently has an annual polysilicone capacity of 70,000 metric tons. Polysilicone is commonly used in semiconductor devices, but it has potential for much more. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company. 4.6 billion market cap, they're trading at $66 a share, and they have 69 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They did have positive free cash flow in 2017, negative in the next three years. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement, it's revenue minus expenses, and they have positive net income every year. Revenue is the sales for the company. That was pretty steady from 2017 to 2019, then jumped a lot in the trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. And they had the highest gross profit in the trailing 12 months. Below that is operating expenses and then operating income. And their operating income was nearly triple from 2019, but it was lower than in 2017. The company has nearly $1 million of interest income and $22 million of interest they pay in their debt. That's more than double the interest they paid in 2019. Then below that is other income and expenses, which was zero in a trailing 12 months, then your pre-tax income, then your taxes. And the bottom line of the income statement is your net income. And that's positive every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. This company has been growing its factory each year, so they spend a lot in CapEx. When you invest in CapEx, those dollar amounts are depreciated onto the income statement. That's why they had positive net income, but negative free cash flow. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow, and that's negative each year except in 2017 because they're putting a lot of money back into their business to grow it. In future years, the investment in CapEx should pay off and they should have positive and strong free cash flow. They issued $113 million of capital stock in 2018. They added over $100 million of debt in 2019. They issued almost $200 million and paid down almost $100 million. Let's look at the capital structure, $659 million of equity, $333 million of debt. They're 66% equity, 34% debt, and their WAC is 7.75%, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's $8.4 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $7 billion. We divide that by 69 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 101. They're trading at 66, so they're trading at a 34% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a little lower than me. They're at $94 a share. They're also saying the stock is undervalued. Three analysts priced this stock in the past three months, and the average price was 121. The low was 97, the high was 135. This is the stock price the last five years, so you can see it was flat for a while, and the stock price was really driven up well over $100, but it's come back down to $66. If you bought the stock just one year ago, you would have made an amazing return, even if you sold it for $66. They have a pretty low beta, 0.73, so the stock moves less than the market. It's not volatile. The stock has gone up nearly 600% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 47%. The 52-week low was $9, the high was $130. And the stock is trading well above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 2.5 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 69 million shares outstanding, 43 million are on float, 66% are held by institutions, about 10.5% of the shares outstanding are shorted. In the past year, this stock has gone up 566%, while its industry went up 84% and the market 59%. This stock has also done really well in the past three years and past five years, performing much better than its industry and the market. 
Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 28%, while its industry grows 14% and the market grows 18%. The revenue forecast is for this company to grow 18%, its industry 8.5%, and the market 10%. In the past five years, this company's earnings grew 13%, while its industry 14%, and the market 12%. But in the last year, their earnings grew 353%, while its industry grew 30%, and the market 3%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you would have been in the red for a long time, but if you held out till today, you would have been at $59,000. At one point, your investment would have been close to $100,000. If you held out the entire 10 years, that's an annual return of 19%. The CEO of the company owns 11.3% of the stock, then Invesco, 91 UK Limited, Pinpoint, and another executive at the firm. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE is 32, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 60.2, so investors are paying $60 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 8.4. Price to book is stock price over book value per share, they're at 7.0. Their return on invested capital is 10.3%, and their WAC is 7.7%. That gives them a 2.5% excess return. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can cover their interest payments five and a half times. ROE is net income over equity. They have a 12% ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can only cover 50% of their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are 70 million of cash, 53 million of inventory, and 39 million of restricted cash. So the company does seem to be undercapitalized. They had negative 135 million of free cash flow, negative 156 million of working capital, and they don't pay a dividend. So they're short about $300 million. So they're going to need more debt or equity financing to run their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos on Applied Materials and LAM Research, both in the same industry as DACO. And if DACO has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're a lot worse in PE and price of sales. They're a little better in price to book. They have the worst current ratio. They have the lowest ROE. They are the lowest in debt, which is good. And they're the smallest company by far. The other companies are much bigger than them. And they don't pay a dividend. The other two companies do. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 34% discount. This company makes some really important products for the solar PV industry, which is a really big and hot industry at this point. I can see this stock going way higher, but it could be a bumpy road. I rank their free cash flows 2 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratios 4 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.